And before it's a dead end. Yep. Yeah, usually these rooms that are dead ends are because I, they're actually dead ends. So I can't. I might be able to go down. I think. Oh, that's what those are. Why did I mark those then? Must have been an accident, hitting the wrong button or something. Hmm. 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 Pretty sure the next step is get double jump, but I don't know where it is. Oh, level up it. Which is summon Shovel Knight, call forth a shovel wielding knight to set upon your phone. It's red though, so it replaces tentacle assault. <clears throat> I mean the familiar is like he's gonna he's gonna do some damage when he hits, but I mean these random monsters, like who cares, you know? Bosses is where it's more important! I think there was like a wall, yeah, it was like a hive. I basically need a... Some kind of swimming ability. I feel like there's something to this waterfall over here, too. Ow! Like, video games, the, the waterfalls are always important. What the heck is hitting me? How's this thing not dead? Waterfalls are always important. There's gotta be something here. I just need to train in the waterfall by standing in it. Oh. Well, I can't get back up, can I? So... Gotta go all the way back again. Jeez, I hate this place. Thanks, I hate it. Topher, thank you for the three frickin' years of Twitter Prime, dude. Thank you very much, man. And Chris also with 22 months of Twitch Prime. Thank you very much, both of you guys. For the reason of love. Second. Trying to find the good audio balance for this game seems like when the when the sound you know what I could do is turn the sound effects down oh. that'd be a little bit better
Now that you have all the Shovel Knight stuff, I want to show an amazing pixel art someone did. <laughs> Miserable little pile of dirt. Nice. <laughs> That's good. Skirt isn't, skirt isn't short enough to be full anime. It's literally just below the panty line. That's like official anime skirt level. But I'm also wearing shorts, like bicycle shorts underneath. Which I'm, I appreciate them doing. Otherwise, it's just gratuitous for no reason other than to just get teenagers excited. Hmm, Treasure? How does one acquire Treasure? Probably double jump from under here. Or a wall hop or something along those lines, yeah. Your friend hates Miriam's design? Uh, I don't like the random knickknacks and things you can put on her, like a cowboy hat. I'd really just prefer to not have. Hats uh, hats and helmets that like fit in the context of the game style would be cool that you can alter on her, but having her have a cowboy hat is kind of dumb. It's just like, uh, it feels like it's cheapening it by putting a bunch of knickknacks and stuff everywhere, like Lightning Returns does that stuff and I hate it. Customizations are nice, yes, I, I agree. And sometimes meme customizations are great, but like this cowboy head is like a, a main upgraded item, you know? Like it's part of the natural item progression and it, it should be more fitting to the environment than meme type uh, customizations. Those should be reserved for like special downloadable content type things, you know? Writing this thing does absolutely nothing. Weird. Oh, it does dump you on top of a Dullahan head, though, so there's that. It helped me complete the map. True. And there is that ring that increases attack power based on map completion. Let's see how much better that is, by the way. It's still one, smile. going here. Ah. I think I can actually go in here now. But I think it's just for our tragedy, nothing else. Yeah, just a tragedy. A beast Barret. A beast Barret. I know it's Bray. Uh, wow. I mean, like, no, though. Lol. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hello, Doc Corbin. How are you today? Uh, there's a lot of unexplored stuff over here. There's that train station over there. I guess we can go over here. See what we can find. <sighs> Take me to the other side! Whee! That was fun. We, we. Does this have a game over plus feature? I wish, golly gee, there's nothing better than getting to the literal end of the game and then being forced to start all the way over because you have some kind of arbitrary currency that when spent, completely game over so you unlocks you from advancing. <laughs> That's what that, that, as far as I know, as far as I can understand, I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure I got on the final, 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 final boss of the game and had to restart because I didn't have any D power and the game actually required that I have D power, like D percentage. I, I had to go into dragon form to break some kind of shield and it only lasted for a little bit of time. So I'd break the shield and then he'd get it again and, and it was literally impossible for me to win the fight because of that. How cool is that, right? But putting the game over mechanic as a required use on the final boss, so if you don't have enough, well then I guess that's just tough, tough shit. Cool. I will take advantage of the save point, thank you very much. Who are you? Who are you? I mean, when you have a masterful understanding of a game, of course it's gonna feel better because you know everything there is to know about the game's mechanics and how to exploit it. Every, every game is easy to appreciate when you know the speedrun of it. It doesn't make the game good because like such a small percentage of people are actually going to speedrun games, just in general, let alone a specific game. So balancing and designing a game based around a, like, and, and, and forgiving it for being a good speedrun is just not, it's not right. You know, if anything, the speedrun just makes me recognize just how bad that game is. Because if you can, there's no glitches in the Dragon Quarter speedrun. You're not skipping huge tracks of the content. And the speedrun is about an hour. So with all the combat in the entire game, and walking from one end of the game to the other, it's an hour. That's it. To walk the entire expanse of the game's content takes like 20 minutes and then you have some fighting in between and cutscenes as like the definition of shallow shallow content but that's the thing son it's not even just like that it's a bad dragon quest game it's just a bad game plain and simple it's not just a bad dragon quest game it's a bad game when you have those kinds of mechanics. Yeah, it's also a bad Dragon Quest game because you're like punished for turning into a dragon and stuff, but like, it's just, it's just bad, man. Just bad, all of it. Outside terror issue, yeah, the, we've already had some frame issue with the outside tower. I feel like I should be able to activate this elevator or something. Relax. 
I mean, he kind of is Donkey Kong. He's even throwing barrels down a down a slope. I've heard the only version that this doesn't lag on is the PC version if you have like a decent machine. Yeah. Alright, so I, I wanted to, before I answered this question, I wanted to ask Seven just to make sure what, I, I knew what he felt about it, but someone was asking about FF7 no items uh, incentive, and they're asking, does that include tents? And the answer is yes, it does include tents. No items, including tents. Not like FF9, where there's no inns where you can stay at to recover. FF7 does have inns where you can stay and recover, so there is no use of tents as well. But I wanted to confirm it with Seven before answering the question, so there you go. Well, not so much as con confirm, but sort of see what his opinion is and go from there and we have if we had dissenting opinions to discuss it rather than just be like oh i'll answer the question for both of us you know kind of thing <sighs> but yeah as far as shop goes the only shop requirement is buying the three batteries for the shinra tower and then that's it so there you go there's your answer if you were still here questioning that all right, I guess we're back here again. Let's see if we can find something that we missed last time or something. Oh, chair. Don't mind if I do. You're excited about five and seven? Yeah, I think uh, I think there's some really unique incentives we did this year that, that are really, really going to spice things up uh, this year. There's definitely some stuff that's like, you know, um standard for for a lot of the, the a lot of the games like with ff3 there's not a whole lot you can do with that game so leviathan and bahamut is is about as much as we can do this year plus we don't want to make every game like super challenging and super crazy but uh you got some, <laughs> you got some incentives coming up that are gonna dwarf the current ones released so far i'll just say that Fiesta is uh, December 1st, my friend. December 1st is when the Fiesta starts. Oh, sorry, I killed Demon Waifu. Not sorry. Hmm. Gosh, I really don't know what to do or where to go. I feel like I need a double jump to get up here. Unless there's some kind of, like, lever or something somewhere. Yeah. You're punch drunk right now that, that you're going to be watching the third fiesta. Well, technically, it's the fourth fiesta. The, four, the first one was between Seven Sins and Sarath. Uh, but I wasn't a part of that at all. But that's the original Fiesta, and then Sarah said he wasn't too keen on the idea of continuing to play Final Fantasy games, and he also shortly re uh, retired from streaming in general. Oh, I know what I have to do. There we go. We did it. Oh, we didn't do it. Maybe we still did it. No, Crumbs has never been part of the Fiesta, ever. I'm not sure who even that is. Oh, okay. I guess he just isn't a monster. The first Final Fantasy Fiesta was between Seven Sins and, and uh, Sarath. And then the next year was myself with Seven Sins. And then my again and again and again. We're we're pretty much the Fiesta guys, the only ones. Sarah and the first Fiesta, it was a different thing then. It wasn't even quite the same concept as it is now. Uh, seven when when Sarah oh decided to to uh, step down from it, we kind of repurposed and designed it a little bit. 
Hmm, let's admire some art. And, uh... Since then, it's been... Basically, the, the last... Like, these three fiestas are, are the true essence of the fiesta. The first one was just there... They, when it was new and different, and, and it's, it wasn't really evolved into what it is now. Chrome mask, huh? Mask designed to resemble a crow. You know what these masks were originally for? These were worn by, like, uh, doctors and stuff back in the yield days because they didn't have, like, corpse-preserving methods, and they stank to high heaven, so they'd stuff them full of herbs and spices to, uh, to mask the smell. <clears throat> Not just limiting shopping, completely banning it, dude. Completely banning shopping in FM7 is the uh, incentive along with no items. So any item item that we find can't be even used. Yeah, apothecaries, plague doctors, whatever. You can find all the incentives on our Twitter. The FFES, the Twitter. You started watching about a year ago during the fiesta? Yeah, that's about what I remember. This will be your first fiesta? Well, you're in for a treat. That's right, starting December 1st, myself and Seven Sins will be racing through the entire... Jesus. We'll be racing through the entire Final Fantasy franchise, main, main Final Fantasy games, with the potential or possibility of side games or spin-offs, depending on the incentives. There's one major rule that, that you guys should know about, okay? There's no running from any encounter whatsoever. It's not permitted to run from encounters unless required by the game. The only two encounters are Final Fantasy III when you first encounter Bahamut, and then Final Fantasy VIII after you knock down the Atomos robot for the first time. Those are the only two required running points. And also, what the heck is with this loading screen right here? What is, why is this one taking so long to load? Does not include the two MMOs, because it's kind of hard to race through an MMO with infinite content, right? It's kind of impossible. Uh, where do you stop? <laughs> right? Uh, even where, if you have an arbitrary stop point, then like, I mean, are you really even playing the full game, you know? So, hard to do MMOs, especially with FF11 not really being super available anymore. It kind of is, but also kind of isn't. Hmm. Neat. Or just to just, just take me back. What is with the load time in this area? What's with that? Weird. Oh, I see. I just created a shortcut. Okay, cool. Also, you have to keep in mind that MOs typically take a long time to level up. A long time. So, I mean, it would be like an entire season just to level up in an MMO and, and complete all the content. But we do have ideas. Uh, we do have ideas. We have thrown around the idea of potentially admitting FF14 in, uh, but just going into the MSQ and finishing level 50 MSQ kind of thing. But yeah, just just an entire month. Are you is that even is that actually a serious comment? Just an entire month. <laughs> Just spend an entire month on one game. Yeah. Easy. <laughs> what is with the load time between these two areas? That is so odd. I don't understand. But whatever. Solo only. The idea that we tossed around for FF14 uh, was that what we would do is it would be level level um, the, the level 50 up through the, the MSQ, and um, we would allow any kind of help from anybody, so communities can come together and, and make high quality gear for the person, or they can uh, run them through dungeons, whatever. Anything goes, basically. Understand why that's movable, but we'll figure it out, I suppose. Oh, maybe it's just like tutorial, like, hey, look, you can move this platform along this way. 
Green. Familiar Dantalian. Summon for Dantalian to help you. All right. Uh, let's see what he's about. Power leveling would help FF14 go fast. You can't power level in FF14. You know that, right? Like, you can't power people through dungeons because you, there's uh, level matching or whatever. Level, uh, level... If you go to the level 12 dungeon, everybody's level 12. Sacred Shard increases your stats. What color was it? But yeah, I mean, it would. We we mathed it out, and we the, well, we thought it would take about uh, seven days with the streaming ish. So it wouldn't be too impossible or too unrealistic to do, but you know, it would still be quite a quite a feat, assuming things went well, assuming we were even right, assuming we had community help, all that good stuff. Lots of assumptions. Hi. Is there something I can help you with, human? Yeah, sure. That aura about you. You're a vampire! And what of it? Will you murder me for that alone? I've picked no quarrel with you. <sighs> My name is Orlog Dracul, but you may call me O.D. I oversee this library, Miss... Miriam. Am I permitted to take out books from this library of yours? Of course, Miriam. Although you would be my first human patron. The books here are magical tomes that impart power to their readers. Oh. As long as you are here, why not avail yourself of their boons? Oh. Oh. Yeah, I will take that one, thank you. Be certain to return what you borrow. This is a library, not a bookshop. Oh, dear. How does one board the train here in the castle? That old thing. Why would you want to? You know, because train rides. You need credentials to pass through the station gate. I could give you mine. Really? But the credentials must carry your photograph in order to be valid. My what? Ah, that's right. Your kind hasn't invented <laughs> photography. Yeah, we have. But if anyone has come close, it would be the church. If you know any men or women of the cloth, they may be able to help you. I just want to make sure that the... The tome was actually in my inventory. Be certain to return what you bought. Maybe you have something else to say? To take okay. Be certain to return. No, it's my book forever! You can never have it back! Mine! Yep! That's only the one transition that uh, is a lot of time. Huh. Oh, I found the teleport point to here. Oh, thank you, book. That's not creepy at all. Books of knowledge. Books of power. Ouch. 